when Werner Heisenberg first developed the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, he just called it the Uncertainty Principle. Later, we called it that he didn't name it after himself. But when he first developed it, he got it out of the wave nature of reality. He said, like, every particle is also a wave, and waves are subject to this trade-off between position and momentum knowledge. And that's no different for the subatomic world. Boom, uncertainty principle. He, he explained it in a different way than we now understand it. He explained it using something like an observer effect, where he said, okay, okay, pretend. Pretend you've got one atom in a box. Right down there, it's a little atom, you know, one atom, one electron, doesn't matter, one particle. And you want to look at it, and you want to study it, you want to know where it is, and how fast it's going, where it's going, you want its position and its momentum. Okay, in order to see that, you need to bounce some light off of it, right? So you just shoot some light at the electron, and then the light comes up to your eyeball, and you're like, oh, there it is. Okay. Let's say you really, really, really want to know its position. So you use super high frequency light, like just tiny, tiny, tiny frequency light, super high frequency, a lot of energy, but also a lot of precision because that wavelength of the light is very, very small. And so it's not going to wiggle around a lot. You're going to get such a superb picture of that electron. You zap it and you beam that high frequency light, that short wavelength light off the electron, boom, and you get it and you're like, aha, spotted you, you're right there. But in order to make that measurement, you had to punch the electron with a beam of light, which is going to send it flying. Send it flying. So now you have no idea what its momentum is. The process of observing it made it fly away. Okay, okay, so maybe you back off. Maybe instead of like high frequency light, you're going to use low frequency light with long wavelengths. So you're going to be a little bit gentler on that electron. You're not going to slap it around. You're just going to massage it a little. You do that. You have this low frequency light coming in. It massages the electron and it comes back out. You have a pretty good idea of the momentum of the electron because you didn't nudge it much. But because you such, use such long wavelength light, you're very, very fuzzy about where it is. You have this trade-off between position and momentum. Now, this is a, an intuitive way to think about it. In reality, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle has absolutely nothing to do with observation or measurement. In reality, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is simply baked into the fundamental reality of our universe. It's just there. It doesn't matter how clever you are or what kind of contraption you use to, you simply can't ever measure precisely the position and momentum of a subatomic particle. You just can't. It's baked into the fundamental laws of nature, or just, just yeah, the laws of nature, the quantum mechanics. So you can't just do it. And it's, and it's, it has nothing to do with the experiment. This is an intuitive way of understanding it, but the picture is so much larger. It's so much larger that when physicists were developing quantum mechanics 100 years ago, they decided to elevate this uncertainty principle to a principle. They say, you know what? This is just real. And it, and, and it bothered the heck out of people like Einstein, but that's a different video. But they said, this is real. We, you, you're, there's a limit to quantum knowledge. And it's not just position and momentum. There are many, many, many different pairs of quantities of systems that are subject to an uncertainty principle. Now, in quantum mechanics, we have something we call an observable. As you might guess, this is the name we give to something that you could observe. So if you have a system with particles doing their thing, whatever, just, just you got a box with a little quantum system in it, you want to study it, you want to measure it. There's a list of observables that you can measure. You can measure, say, the position and momentum. You can measure the energy level, the spin, the angular momentum. There's, there's all sorts of things you might possibly measure. Each one of these things that you could measure is called an observable. Now, sometimes in quantum mechanics, when you make an observation, so you say, okay, I am going to measure the spin and I'm going to gain knowledge about that observable, about this quantity called spin. And you make your measurement, you make your observation, you have learned something about the spin. Sometimes, sometimes in quantum mechanics, 
Once you learn something about one observable, you automatically learn something about other observables. Like if you if you know the the spin, uh, then then it might give you some information about the energy level and vice versa. So so uh, these these are handy things. Like you can measure one thing, you also get information about another. That's not always the case. It's simply not always the case. And sometimes you learn something about the particle. You make a measurement. You gain knowledge about one observable. And it doesn't tell you anything at all about the other observables. When that happens, there is an uncertainty principle at play. So like if I try to measure the position of an electron, I get that observable quantity out. It tells me nothing about the momentum. I have to do a separate set of observations in order to get the momentum. But when I get the momentum, it doesn't tell me anything about the position. So I have to choose. Same thing is true for like energy and the interval of time it takes to make the measurement. Those, those, uh, those two observables uh, don't tell you anything about each other. Uh, different components of angular momentum don't tell you anything. Uh, like, uh, energy levels of an electron in an atom. Once you know the energy level of an electron in an atom, you don't know a lot about its position and momentum. It's just the way the quantum world is. Anytime you, you make an observation and you don't learn about other quantities, there is an uncertainty principle at play. So the uncertainty principle is like, is like a budget. When you're trying to make an observation and you're trying to gain as much information about a system, a particle, an atom, or whatever, you can only spend so much money. And if you put all your money on position, then you have nothing left to spend on momentum and you learn nothing. Or you can split it 50-50 and you can learn a little bit about position, a little bit mom about momentum, but then you run out of money and so you don't know as much as you would like. Or like 75% position, 25% momentum. It's like a budget. Think of the uncertainty principle as a budget for making observations. And every time you make an observation, you have to spend a little bit of money. Speaking of money, please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to keep these shows going. And I will see you next week.